Welcome back to Rookie Roost. I'm Sean. And I'm Jackie. And we are Rookie Roost. I just said that. So in the last video, I finished drilling out hopefully all the holes for the entire electrical system in the house. And today, Jackie's going to help me wire it up, or at least get all the wires in the walls, because it could be a pain in the ass alone. So here we go! If you're new here, this video series follows the day-to-day -day life and build of a tiny house on wheels. So let's get to it. I wonder if this is how the professionals do it, you know? Look just at that. Oh yeah. All junky uh, and shit. Too much. Look at that, there's wires in the walls. I'm getting bunged up. <laughs> you can help me not get bunged up over here. It's gonna get really hard to pull, so I don't really know. Like... You just gotta keep working. People go entire, think of a whole actual sized house, you know? Oh, that's just hard. imagine it. Is this really how it works? You have to like walk all over the place constantly. All right, shimmy shimmy. Basically, you have to pull from like the nearest corner. Well, good thing it's a tiny house and not a real house. Welcome the view. Whoops! These three outlets are together on a circuit, so we need some extra here. Wow, interesting. It's almost like I know what I'm doing. I have no idea what I'm doing. This is <laughs> horrible. Yeah, because you cut it, and then it's two. I'm confused now. I think we should watch a video. Video time. Let's watch a video and learn some things. We need some cookies. I don't have cookies. I have cookies. So here is the breaker box that we've got. It's a 60 amp, 16 circuit, up to 32 circuits if you use the double circuit things that I know nothing about. And so to mount it, it's going to go between the studs, which you'll see in a minute, and it needs to screw into the studs. And so we've got to knock out a couple places to screw it in. So I'm going to do that. I've got a punch. This is like a nail punch, I think. I got a hammer, and I'm going to hope I don't break it. Oh, I feel like I'm breaking it. And it's not moving a single bit, not even a little touch. So maybe I have to <laughs> nail it from the other side. Let's see if that's the case. Well, it is budging. Still feel like I'm destroying things. Okay, I've got it out enough. I can probably grab it with pliers. There it goes. And there are a couple on the other side. Wow, they're called punch outs. They just punch right out. This is really dumb. You can stop recording because uh, it's just a waste of gigabytes. Now these should just snap right off, right? Just right off because they want you to be able to use them. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Let's mount a breaker box. Hopefully. Oh, she's beautiful. All right, done. So the holes that they give to punch out are really close to the uh, face of the stud. So I think I'm gonna put another pair of holes further back. I don't know, I think they expect you to maybe mount it in a two by six wall what? or just have two by sixes just for that part. I get it, sure. It's a deep ass panel. Sure, then you can insulate behind it too. So I want a little piece of wood to go into here. All right, so I've made a shim out of just a two by four, cut it down to about 3 16 of an inch, which is all I need. Snug. Here's the big old door. The breaker box. Okay, so yeah, we're going from this outlet through this hole and just following that the whole way around. So these two, right? So we're going to need to make sure there's yes. enough. So we'll, we'll make sure at the end, right? Do that after. Here we go. So yeah, I guess try to make sure you stay on the same side of the cable the whole way along. So it's good times, eh? <laughs> good to know. I'm glad we don't have many uh, points where we run two cables through a corner. Might have been a good idea to make two holes in the corners. Is that why you put one through a hole? Because it just gets harder. Probably. Oh, maybe it's just because I was bashing into this. <laughs> like when electricians say they're tired from pulling cable all day and shit. Yeah. It's like, yeah, because they're, they're doing this and it's exhausting. We got smart and just pulled a whole bunch through the corners, which are tough to get around. And now we'll just feed the rest through the wall. There, we're done. Okay. You learned a lot, so you could probably run them on your own, Only you know? 16 circuits to go. I'll see you next week when I'm still working on it. Alright, so we've got two lines through, both using the same hole. I know a lot of people only put one through a hole. I did a lot of reading on it and everything I could possibly find suggests that two through a three-quarter inch hole is absolutely no problem. 
but I can see why you'd only do one through a hole because it gets to be a real pain in the ass to pull it through. But we did it, we've got two 12 two lines that can carry a 20 amp circuit and the reason I'm using those for this size is because this is where the entire electronic area of the house is going to be. There's going to be stuff like Xbox, PlayStation, computer, guitar amp, subwoofer, pretty much everything that makes the house fun is going to be right here in the desk slash entertainment area. So I didn't want to ever run into any problems with that one so I'm just overbuilding it to 20 amps for all that. A lot of the circuits are 20 amps as you've seen from the last video where I went over the model. Pretty much everything in the kitchen, all of the RV appliances are going to be around 20 amps. So I'm going to have this pain in the ass in quite a few spots but these were the longest runs. They go almost the whole way around the house when it comes down to it. I could have probably gone underneath the loft with them but since the loft isn't going to have a real ceiling it's just going to be like this little drop down ceiling thing. I wasn't sure if that was going to be good enough for code standards but either way this is done. It works. It may have cost a lot more but it's done. Jackie had to leave so I am here going to try to do a lot more on my own but there's not a whole lot of point to filming it because it's just going to be me pulling cable and a lot of repetitive action. So I got the bathroom line done for the bathroom outlets and then I realized the next lines need this wall in here so I had to really get this wall in place I should put some vapor barrier on this stud and of course acoustic seal behind before I do that don't have a lot of acoustic seal left so that might not be possible but anyways this wall is now a 2x4 thick so it'll be a better fit with the shower on the inside of it <laughs> kind of wanted to see how my idea is gonna work because I'm gonna use this space this empty void here once it's back that space is going to be right here. And I figured that space would make a good spot for a little shelf to hold a cup or a bottle of beer. So rather than dropping loops in the uh, the run for the outlets to give them enough to cut in the middle of the loop and then do what you gotta do. I find it to be quite a bit easier to just cut what I need for that little bit of a run and not do the loops thing, just make little segments kinda as I go. So I'm doing that up here in the loft. Done. Much easier. All right, it's a new day today. I am finally actually putting in the fire blocking, and that means we need to drill through the fire blocking to get a lot of the cables through. Just in a few places, I'm trying to strategically place the fire blocks so that I don't need to do that. If you're wondering what a fire block is, well, it's that. It's a block that just goes horizontally inside the wall cavity, and it means that if a fire starts in this part of the wall, it'll hopefully use up all the air in that cavity and not be able to spread out throughout the house, or at least through that part of the wall. At least that's my understanding of it. Don't quote me on that. So this is a good opportunity to show you some of the bits that I'm using. So I started out using three quarter inch spade bits, and as soon as I hit some screws, which were coming in from the sheathing into the studs, I just mangled the crap out of the threads that pull the spade bit through, and so the spade bits no longer get pulled through and it's pretty crappy. This one's not too bad. This one came with a kit that I've had forever. It doesn't have threads on it. It requires you to really change the angle on the drill quite a bit to kind of dig your way through. It's a bit of a brutal tool. This one's really good. This is like an auger type bit. And it's got threads on it as well, but these threads are quite a bit better than the threads that are on these. And it was working really well for a while until it started hitting the odd screw, but this thing's actually advertised to be able to just plow through screws and nails, so I was just going through and it really wore down the actual auger part. And so now what this does is it gets pulled through most of the way, but as soon as the threads pop out the other side of the stud, it just stops. And it requires a huge amount of force for me to just push the drill through the rest of the wall until it eventually just kind of busts through the wood, which is pretty annoying and required a lot of effort and left me very tired the next day. But this is what I did the majority of the house with. Other stuff I have and thought I might use include this hole saw. I've never ended up using it because I can already foresee the problem that I would have with that. I might get an inch and a half worth of 2x4 stuck in there and then I'd have to work them out every time. They're pretty annoying. One solution I have found to the auger bit, not going through the complete end, is then switching to this bit, which I bought last summer to go through the metal flange of the trailer, which it's gotten a bit dull because it has gone through that flange quite a few times, but it still goes through wood pretty well. The problem is with this though that it needs a pilot hold in order to really grip on anything. Luckily this creates a pretty fine pilot hole. So these two combined get me through, but it's been annoying. I'm sure there's a better kind of augered bit and maybe I'll try one out eventually, but I made it through. These will get me through the rest. And that's my plan today, just get all the fire blocking up and drill through where I need to run wires through, which is mostly just around the breaker box. Everywhere else is mostly a horizontal run, so I'm gonna carry on with that.
So I think I'm about to make some drastic changes. Mostly because I decided to actually drain the kitchen sink rather than just have it empty into a jug below the kitchen sink. Which, I know, sounds stupid, because it kind of is. We originally were very paranoid about water freezing in this house and didn't really want water leaving the house and then getting frozen. Especially Jackie, she's from Alberta, it gets cold there, I get it. But we've since changed that philosophy, or at least I've changed the philosophy, and I'm easily going to be able to drain the shower into its own tank back there. Kitchen though, not so easily drained, mostly because of this pain in the ass storage area that we thought was a great idea. I think I have a better idea now. It's gonna take a lot of work, but I think it's gonna be worth it in the end. And I'm gonna completely redo the propane system, which is a bunch of money down the drain, but I could do a much better job anyway, so it's worth it to spend a little bit of money and get it done right. So I think I'm just gonna take all of this out, and then I'm actually gonna build like what most people do, some kind of a utility box on the tongue of the trailer, which is right behind me here, and basically solve a whole bunch of my problems at once by having a proper place for the sink to drain to. It's gonna go through this floor and then out through that utility box into, which is where you'll hook it up to like an external tank or whatever. I'll be able to have the propane regulator inside that utility box and then send the propane lines just under here nicely to, maybe I'll just pop it up straight here for the furnace instead of having this goofy ass setup and Camera battery died. Man, these camera batteries are just absolute sh**. They're wasabi power. Cannot recommend. It says it has half charge and suddenly the camera shuts off. No warning, just shuts off. Anyways, train of thought. Totally gone. Um, building the box. Gonna have the propane redone. Gonna have the sink drain out through the floor. And I'm not gonna have a garburetor. What the hell do I need a garburetor for? Garburetor, garbage disposal, I don't know what people call them. Just clean your plate off before you stick it in the sink. Anyway, so now I'm in the middle of running water lines. I'll soon be in the middle of also proper plumbing, propane, and electricity. I've got it all going on all at once here. But the reason I never finish anything is mostly because of this area. So if I just get it done properly, it should all just fly through. And I really do want to concentrate on getting the kitchen to like this finished place where it just functions. I've already moved the fridge down into the uh, like bathroom area because that's probably the last thing I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna end this video here. It might be a little bit of a weird transition here while I try to figure out what's going on. It's good, this is a good decision that I'm making. I'm trying to convince myself that this will work. Jackie will be here any minute. We'll we'll talk it through. Maybe a second person will help me see things a bit clearer. Anyways, don't forget to like and leave a comment. Subscribe if you're new and check the link in the description below for the Patreon page where I am getting a little better at posting every single day. A little something something. You'll see this in progress as it happens over the next week. But if you don't have a buck a month to spare, I'll just see you back here on YouTube right here at The Roost.